Earlier this month, I came across this video. My reaction to that was of shock, horror, disgust, and absolute dismay. And that's when this thought crashed over me. AI is taking over and it's destroying everything I've built as a photographer. I then started doing a bit of my own research and turned to the good people of Reddit. And I was absolutely petrified by the end of it. I've now set out to see if AI is as good as it really says it is and if it can produce an image better than I can. It's time to find out if we can still fight back or if AI has already won. Now, to start off with the most important order of business, the photo. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through a little food photography and food styling masterclass. I'm just gonna walk you through it and I'm so lovely that I've even set up my overhead tripod so you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. I'm just gonna basically recreate an image that I've already taken for a client before. I'm then gonna compare that image alongside an image generator on ChatGPT and I'm also gonna compare it alongside that app that I told you about and I'm just gonna see if they come up with anything that is better than the photo that I've taken or if I'm gonna be surprised by the results. I haven't a clue what any of this is gonna look like. I'm filming this in real time. Alrighty, so I've got the toast and I've got the spoon all as well and as i said this is a really quick master class because we just really need the photo to get going okay so the first thing that you want to do is you want to take your baking paper and you just want to sort of put it down and scrunch it up a bit just to give it a bit of texture put your plate just on the top you want to pick up your toast look at the piece that actually looks the nicest the one on my left looks the nicest so we'll put the one on the right on the bottom and we'll just stack the two. So the secret to a lot of food styling is to make it look the way that you would normally have it at home to give it a really nice relaxed feel and look. Obviously that differs from like set to set but if you're wanting more of a casual scene or a scene that you can imagine yourself in I think the best thing about food photography is to transport people into a story or take them back to their childhood or whatever. The, the best thing to do is just make things look casual. Take your spread, the only thing you need here is a spoon. And from here, you just put the spread onto the bread. For things to look really delicious and decadent is to just overload it a bit more with that thing. So say for instance, you're making like a pea dish and peas are the key ingredient. Just put way more peas than you normally would like in your own home. To make a nice photo, you wouldn't just spread it the way you usually would with a knife. So yeah, so just remember small details like that. If you're ever interested in food photography, if you're watching this video and you're not a food photographer, well, you can never lose out on too many skills. To just give it like a couple of flicks just with your spoon, just to give some really beautiful shadows for when you take a photo and then you can really build on those when you're editing. And we've also got some hazelnut. This works even better this sort of photo with Nutella. So I'm just putting some chopped hazelnuts just again, like you've just thrown them on. Again, to give it that very homey feel, you want to then grab a knife and think about what side of the knife that you're actually gonna have it on. But again, as if someone's just put it in the spread, all you have to do is then set it at the side of your plate. And there you have it. Literally the easiest food styling photo ever, to be honest. We are good to go. So I always leave my ISO at about 500 and then my aperture on like eagle eye shots is usually, usually between like f8, f11. My shutter speed is usually always at 1 60th of a second unless I've got anything else specific that I'm doing that needs say like an action shot or like dripping or anything like that. Okay, so we've got the photo. Now let's get cracking with AI. Please step into my office here. Okay, so I've just finished editing the image and here is the before and here is the after. Now, as you can see, once it's been edited, you can tell that it's got all these beautiful swirls and lovely shadows, which immediately draws your eye in and makes you want to take a big fat bite out of it, to be honest. The next thing that we're gonna do, and this is the bit I'm really nervy about, is now, try and generate an image that is similar to this on ChatGPT and just prompt it and see what happens, if anything. Let's do it then. Eek! I feel like I'm doing an exam at school or something. This is ridiculous. Okay, let me put in ChatGPT. We're gonna go on the Explore GPTs page. And as you can see, like in the trending option, it has got image generator. So we're gonna click on that and then start chat. And I'm going to put in the image generator exactly what it is that I photograph. And I think I've been as descriptive as possible. Um, okay, so honestly looks like the worst thing I've ever seen. Okay, maybe it was just my... This doesn't look 
this looks extremely fake and I have seen photos out there which do not look this level of fake but then I also know that it could be the image generator that I'm using. But maybe if I try and just prompt it a bit more I'm gonna ask to make it more realistic. Okay still it looks a bit better, it still looks very fake. If I mention like anything to do with food photography, if that way it will just prompt it to make it just look a bit better. Make it look like a food photographer has taken it. Let me know if you need further adjustments. Yes, it looks fake. Could you please make it look homey and realistic? No, it's not getting the assignment here. This has made me feel better to be honest. <laughs> Makes me feel like my job is still relevant. I mean, you can immediately tell the difference from my focus and then let's pick the best one out of this photo that looks let's say the most realistic maybe the second one to be honest if we just compare the two you can see just such a massive difference apart from the fact that the chat gbt one looks cartoony looks fake to be honest you know what just for the purpose of this video you know those shots that sometimes people take a photo of and it's macro shots of say like lime slices all together and it looks really beautiful and it looks sort of lovely and green so i'm gonna put that in chat gpt and just see it comes up with a really nice macro shot i'm also gonna find an image off pinterest and i'm just gonna see if it comes up with anything say that looks a bit more realistic because i know it really depends on the sort of image you use but that isn't to say I have seen a couple of food blogs and I've also seen things out there of people using AI generated food photography images in particular because that is the sort of thing that I look up all the time. Some of these images are really realistic but they always, I can always tell when it's an AI image. I have never struggled. I have never looked at it and thought, is that AI? No, I can always tell that it sort of almost looks fake. Even the ones which could pass off as, if you aren't a food photographer or any sort of photographer, you'd probably look at it and go, actually, you know what? This looks real. Okay, so I'll just go on Pinterest and find macro shot of lines. Let's use this one from someone it says here by Hannah Bruce. Okay, Hannah Bruce, if you're watching this video, thanks for letting us use your image as an example. Okay, so let's pick up that image and then compare it alongside a prompt for ChatGPT. A situation like this, yeah, some people, obviously not people in photography, might look at this and think, Oh, this looks quite realistic. I'm gonna go a bit further. I put shot of lime slices all laid out with some overlapping. Realistic, please. That still looks massively fake and cartoony, but to a lot of people that might not. Whereas the other ones, yeah, 100%, I think to the majority of people looking at these images, they'd be like, yeah, they're fake. Or actually maybe it's because it is simpler. Maybe because this is a simpler sort of thing that ChatGPT has to do, whereas mine was a bit more complex. The one that I'm actually genuinely really interested on experimenting with it is with that brand. Oh my gosh, can you imagine if they're watching this video and they're gonna be like, what the hell's going on? Like this girl actually hates us. I think the first time I saw that brand, I thought, oh my gosh, this is a complete nightmare. And I'm actually quite shocked. Like some of their advertising is borderline shocking, but then again, on social media, if you're not controversial or making people feel something, I mean, what really are you doing? Indifference is um, irrelevant on social media it seems they're basically saying why spend xyz on a food photographer when you could literally just use our app to recreate these images and i totally get that that's like a sales tactic from them yep totally get it but i don't know it really it really ignites something in me to be really pissed off so i think the best thing to do now that we've done the image generator on ChatGPT, i am now going to turn to them and see what they could come up with. If anything, I actually don't know. I know that they do products, but I'm not sure about food and drinks. This is exciting because I've never actually looked into them. So this is power your brand with 3D AI visuals. Do you get what I mean? This is terrifying. Like what the hell is going on? And you see like all these brands. This is an interesting thing. When I first came across this video, I actually put in chat GPT, like what is, what is the deal with this brand? And they came back with, there aren't any customer reviews or anything like that that they could sort of give me. And I'm wondering, oh, maybe I'm just being crazy. But I don't know. I think that this is wild, considering that they seem like a pretty, pretty new company um, in the grand scheme of things. But anyway, who am I to judge? Basically, you can craft any 3D models, any product visuals, anything like that. That's quite scary because I think with product photography, it is really much easier to make things look 
real. So this to me, okay, if you're a product photographer watching this, please let me know if if not, but this looks pretty real to me. And that is pretty terrifying to be honest. Pick a template or start from scratch. Oh God, I don't know. I'm just like, things like this just give me the fear. Food and beverage. Let's just see. This looks like one of those Canva, you know, in Canva, you put something in that you remove the background. What is that? A mad line. <laughs> no, I can't. Okay. So we're now scrolling down and product photography here. Do you know what this looks like? If I were to see this, except for this one, I mean, please. But um, if I were to look at this, I would probably say that this just looks like, and this being heavily photoshopped by someone but some of them like the cans for instance do look real i would say again though this is product photography within food and drink um and that is why maybe it's got a bit more appeal in terms of the photography because if you were to say let's do what i just did i mean i think that would be a hot mess and i'm gonna see i don't actually know if i can try and prompt it on this but let's have a look how do i <laughs> create a prompt help i am confused okay i think this is just gonna have to be a little bit different than what i was expecting so let's now go down and let's go to kitchens okay great biscoff and uh, test this is so confusing okay i definitely don't think that we'll be able to do this this is really odd this is definitely not what i expected i mean i click this i started a project i mean what what happens here then nothing so the good news is that it can't just create chat gpt images the bad news is that a lot of these things could actually come across as really quite realistic if you're looking at all these products it's, it's what i'm saying like sometimes the food things are not but when you're just using products some of the stuff yeah is quite real like let's just say this fruit and citrus like that is bonkers this is really odd and <laughs> this looks like a review on this website it's not it's just not what i expected i thought i'd be able to put in a prompt and it would maybe help me get to where I need to be. But no, that clearly is not the case. Nothing can ever replace, I think, a human hand. Things like this will only become to improve. I think that is where the problem will start. Because that one was a little bit disappointing, I'm gonna go onto Reddit and I've just searched what is the best image generation site. Now, they've come up and they say that this Leonardo.ai is ideal so i'm gonna try it on there here we go let's move on to the image creation here type of prompt right so we're getting somewhere now i'm gonna put in the exact same prompt that i put in the other one and i'm just gonna put here eagle eye view god this is a bit scary all these things coming up what the hell's going on this is unexpected i suppose i didn't even mention actually that it was a white backdrop like here it doesn't matter this one if you didn't know what you were doing you probably would look at that and think actually that does actually look quite real i don't know this is scary this is scary scary to me okay so i've put textured white backdrop and fill out toast with more swirls um that's not bad if you were to compare all three together what do you think which one do you think is the one that is the best which one do you think is the one that your eye feels more attracted to and can you actually tell if the ai ones are real or not that is the really really interesting thing but you know what the leonardo one is actually really good it's got great shadows it's got great light it's really sort of inviting welcomes you in yeah i mean i would say that this is pretty terrifying i won't lie okay and now the bit that you've all been waiting for now do i think that ai is going to take over photography and take over our jobs no i think ai has a place but i don't think it'll ever take over if you are terrified as i was and um, when i first started thinking and looking into this video then i definitely think that there's not any reason to be say you're like a product photographer or anything like in that space don't worry because i think people will still always be coming to you over ai also i get lots of questions on how i edit my photos and i've done a video on that but happy to do plenty more because there is so much to dissect in lightroom it is borderline a joke if you like this video make sure to subscribe give it a big fat thumbs up and i will see you very soon